Hi everybody, just a brief video today to look at gradient hatch. It's a form of hatch that's probably lesser used than the other patterns that are out there like concrete or dots or just 45 degree angle lines. But uh, by using gradient hatch we can create some pretty cool exhibits. So let me show you how it works. We'll start by coming up to hatch. We'll come down to gradient. And effectively when we, we make a gradient hatch it'll be two colors and then we'll apply a pattern for how it should be displayed. So what I'd like to do is maybe colorize this, make an exhibit that's a little clearer with respect to what's going on. So let's create an object here that I can hatch. We'll set something off to the side. We'll just make a rectangle. And we'll create a gradient hatch. And I'm not going to use blue and yellow. Let's say that we're going to use that for uh, maybe some lot geometry or something like that. We'll grab a uh, dark green and then a lighter green. And myself, when it comes to the hatchet, uh, the way that it's laid out, you can have it, you know, gradient from top to bottom, bottom to top, left, right. I actually like spherical because it uh, applies a lighter color in the center and it gets darker at the edges. Creates kind of a nice effect. We'll go ahead and pick on this swatch here. And because I've got everything visible on the screen, it'll take a couple of seconds for it to find that. But then it'll go ahead and, and colorize that piece. All right, I'll hit escape and that looks pretty good. I'd like to maybe start exploring um, that or experimenting with that with my project here. Let's turn off some of the geometry that I'm not going to need. So we'll, um, oh, actually I will need that. That's my, oh, maybe I won't. I need the normal water level. We'll be good. So we'll drop the contours out. So my riprap and pipes, we'll get rid of the lot numbers. Uh, trees we won't need. Some of the annotation drop that off the outside. I've got some uh, fence geometry, a few more things we don't. Oops, I do need that. Got to have the property lines. So get rid of the setbacks, the center lines, and maybe the names. Here's something that looks like it might not be on the right layer. Some uh, straw bale dikes around the structures, and then we'll get rid of some of the hatch around my, my island there. So that looks good. I've got uh, some layer sets a little easier to work with now. Let's make the assumption that uh, I'm going to hit escape here to cancel out of that. I'm going to use this now to colorize my lots. So I can use this just by selecting it. And this is a cool thing about gradient hatch, uh, or any hatch for that matter. I can come down and say add selected. It'll automatically apply those properties. And then I can start picking points to colorize my lots. So we'll go ahead and put those in. And right click when we're done. We'll say enter. Goes ahead and colors my lots. I'm going to highlight the hatch and I'm going to send that to the back. All right. And one of the things that we'll see is I did use gradient hatch. And as far as the color, it's matching what I have here on the side, but it's kind of bright in the middle. Um, what if I wanted to apply that on a lot-by-lot lot basis? Well, because I created it that way, I have the ability to break the, the hatch up into pieces so that instead the bright center would be in the middle of each lot. The way that I would do that is to highlight the hatch itself, right-click, we'll say Hatch Edit, and in the dialog I'm going to check the box that says Separate Hatches. And when I click OK, it automatically colorizes each an individual parcel the same way that I clicked them and, and uh, colored it on the screen. All right, so now that I've done one, I'd actually will we'll color a few more of these just to make the process a little bit faster. I'm going to split my screen in half because I've got a, a swatch over on the side here. We'll zoom up on my exhibit, take a quick look at that. And over on this side, I've got some ones that I've already set up that I use on a typical basis. So when it comes to the water, we'll select that. Add selected, click on this side, click into this area. We've got our water. Let's take a look at the building pads. We'll highlight one of those, add selected, and then I can click to make this side active and start to drop those in. Just like before, I'd like it to be uh, bright in the center and then darker it, as it gets to the edge. So we'll perform the same operation. We'll just go ahead and uh, allow it to color all of them, which would have a bright center. If I don't like that effect because it kind of makes this house look brighter than the rest of them. What we can do is highlight that, edit it uh, the same way we did before, separate hatches, and then it will distribute that amongst the rest of the uh, the lots. 
So let's do this. Uh, maybe like to take and do the uh, right away. We'll add selected. And as far as the right away, we'll add that to this area up here. Uh, I'm going to add that to these areas in here. Maybe the center of the uh, eyebrow area there, or bump out. And got another spot on the side there. We'll enter. Those look good. Uh, you know, I'm going to do the same thing. We'll separate those hatches. Oops. I want to do highlight that guy and hatch edit. Separate those. That looks pretty good. Just a couple more left. Uh, we'll go ahead and do the pavement. We'll maybe wrap it up with jet that for just for the sake of time. My uh, sidewalks already have a white uh, white look to them anyway. So we'll highlight this guy. Hit enter. That looks pretty good. All right. So in, in doing that, we're able to, to quickly create a almost like a paint by number effect, colorize these areas. And if I come back and turn on my layers, I, I get a pretty, uh, pretty nice looking exhibit from that. All right. So once again, you know, the information may have been clear before, but certainly by using gradient hatches, it uh, can create an exhibit that's a lot clearer if you have to take to a meeting or uh, put on a piece of foam core for others to see. Um, makes the, uh, the information pop on the screen and uh, a lot easier to convey what you're trying to do. Now, one other thing that I would uh, I would take and point out, I've got these created and these swatches were built inside this drawing. What if I wanted to uh, perhaps use these over and over again in multiple drawings? Well, there's a quick way that I can do that. I'm going to open up my, my tool palettes here. We'll put those over on the side. And what I can do is I'm just going to make a, a new tool palette and I'll just call this... Uh, gradient hatches and then I can uh, just start to put these on my uh, my palette so we'll click it once click it a second time and then click and hold it with my left mouse button for the third time drag it up here onto my palette and drop it it will maintain the name that was used when it was created whether it was spherical or um, you know whether it uh, colorizes top to bottom uh, we can rename those when we're done. So click once, click twice, click a third time to hold it, drag it onto the palette. There's the second one. Once, twice, third time, drop it onto the palette. If I right-click on these guys, I can now take and rename them to what it should be. So in this case, that should be for my right-of-ways. This should be uh, for my water. And because I've got stuff uh, selected on the screen, it might be updating a little bit. Let's do uh, this for my lots. Okay, so now I could open uh, any other drawing. Uh, and as long as I had an uh, area uh, on my screen that I could hatch, uh, like I said, once again, like very much like a paint by numbers, I can now open up my palette that's got my uh, predefined colors. I've got consistency now across my office. I just take and drag that in and drop. It's there. Once it's there, we can add selected like we did before. We can separate hatches. And uh, like I said, in the matter of just a few minutes, we can use Gradient Hatch to make a, a pretty cool exhibit. So I hope this helps, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. See ya.